This is part 152 of ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the order of events execution when we have a content page with a master page and a user control. Let's understand this with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have a blank ASP.NET Web Forms application. First, let's add a user control. And let's name it Test User Control. Let's include an H1 tag within this user control. And let's just say this is a test user control. Let's now add a master page. And let's call this site.master. First of all, let's get rid of this content placeholder that's there within the head section. And in the code behind file, Let's include even handler methods for page init and page pre-render as well. So let's call this page init. So this is page initialization even handler method, page load even handler method, and let's also have page pre-render even handler method. Now within the page initialization, let's just say response.write since this is master page let's say master page init event and let's include an HTML break as well and let's say this is master page load event and this is master page pre-render event alright now let's right click on this master page and add a content page so this should add a webform1.aspx. So within this webform1.aspx, we have this content control. Inside this content control, let's drag and drop maybe a text box control. Let's actually flip this webform1 to the design mode, and then let's drag and drop a text box control. And then let's drag and drop our user control from the solution explorer. So here we have the test user control. Let's drag and drop it onto a web form. So we have our test user control here. So if we flip the web form to the source mode, notice that when we dragged and dropped the user control onto the web form, it has automatically generated that registered directive for us. So here we go. We have a text box control and then an HTML break and a user control. All right. Now let's associate three even handler methods for this text box control. So on init, on load, and on pre-render. In a similar fashion, let's have the same event handler methods associated for the user control. In a bit, We'll implement the event handler methods and specify their names here. Okay. All right. So now let's get to the code behind file of this content page. So within the code behind file, we have page load event. So first of all, let's have, let's actually copy the code that we already have within the master page and paste it within our content page. Now, since this is the content page, let's change this text to, instead of master, let's say content. So content page init event, content page load event, and content page pre-render event. In a similar fashion, let's have the respective event handler methods for the text box and user control that we have on this content page. That is this text box one control and this test user control one. So let's paste it here. So I'm pasting it six times and we'll just change the name of the event handler method. Okay, so let's call this maybe text box one init event. So this is going to be text box init event. and let's change this to text box one underscore load and this is going to be text box load event 
similarly text box pre-render event so text box pre-render event and then we have our user control so test user control init event so let's say user control init event and this is going to be test con test user control load so user control load event and finally pre-render for test user control so user control pre-render event all that is left now is to associate this event handler methods with the respective events in the ASPX okay so for text box what is the name of the init event it's called text box one underscore init so let's copy that and specify that right here so text box one underscore init this one is called text box one underscore load and for pre-render it is text box one underscore pre-render and similarly for the user control test user control underscore init is the name of the event handler method so test user control underscore load and for pre-render that's going to be pre-render alright so with all these changes let's actually go ahead and run this and see in what order the events get fired so if you look at the code behind file of the content page we have event handler methods for the content page the text box control and the user control and within the master page we have event handler method for the master page initialization load and pre-render alright so let's go ahead and run this and see the order of execution in action okay look at this now text box initialization event user control initialization event and then master page content page initialization event so the initialization events are occurring from the innermost control to the outermost control now what do we mean by innermost control and outermost control now look at this so this webform1.aspx this is the content page now the controls that is the um, text box control and user control they are present these controls are present on this content page so the innermost controls here are text box and you know this test user control because they are present inside this content page now along with this content page we also have a master page okay so at runtime this master page and content page are actually merged into one thing and that's how we get the layout of the master page and the content of the content page okay when the page is rendered but then is the content page merged into the master page or is the ma master page merged into the content page what actually happens now here's the answer for that you know keep in mind that the master page is merged into the content page and that master page con is actually treated as a control in the content page and this merging process happens during the initialization stage of the page processing so basically a master page is also just like another control on the content page so if you look at this webform 1.aspx at the moment you know this content page is the outermost control and within this content page we have this content control okay and look at what this content control is pointing to it's pointing to the content placeholder on the master page and keep in mind at the initialization stage of the page processing the master page is actually merged into this content page okay and that's how we get the layout that we have in the master page okay and you know just like these controls the master page is also another control within the content page okay so here the innermost controls are these two and then we have the master page itself and then the content page the outermost control is the content page 
okay and then one rule of thumb that we have to keep in mind is this the initialization events are raised from the innermost control to the outermost one and all the other events are raised from the outermost control to the innermost one so here the initialization events of this page you know the init events and look at this they are raised from the innermost control to the outermost control text box and user controls are the controls on the content page master page is also like a control on the content page and then we have the content page itself so the init event is raised from the innermost control to the outermost control but look at the load event and pre-render event load event is raised from the outermost control to the innermost control so from content page then master page then text box and user control similarly pre-render also content page master page text box and user control okay now look at this why is this text box even firing before the user control you know the order of these innermost controls is dictated by the order in which they are present on our content page look at this here first we have the text box control and then the user control that's why uh, you know the init event of text box is fired before the init event of user control if you want the user control init event to be fired first then probably we'll have to switch the order in which they are present on the web form so possibly what we can do here is take this text box control and put this after the user control let's include an HTML break here and let's get rid of this white space alright so now let's go ahead and run this and see in what order the events get fired look at this here text box init event and user control init event and look at here user control init event and text box init event okay so basically for the innermost control the order depends on the order in which you know these controls are laid out on the form alright so basically in general the rule of thumb is that the initialization events are raised from the innermost control to the outermost one and all the other events are raised from the outermost control to the innermost one now two of our valuable YouTube channel subscribers were asked the following question in an interview we have a master page, content page, and a user control with the events that you can see here. Master init and master load, content init and content load, user control init and user control load. When we run the page containing the above events, in what sequence these are processed or fired? Obviously, from what we have seen so far, the order is going to be this one. User control init, master init, content init, and then content load master load user control and why is that that's because in general the initialization events are raised from the innermost control to the outermost control and all the other events are raised from the outermost control to the innermost control all right that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day